The following story is told out from the perspective of my friend in Bayswater. Many of you know this city know that it's probably best to avoid the Far East, and it's definitely best to avoid it at night. I'll refer to my mate SG. After a bender in the city, the night train home seemed like the only option to make it back to a warm bed. Getting off at the station, G told me that he began the short 600 metre walk home like any other night, jumping over the gates as usual and crossing the dark underpass. The sounds of spray cans going off in the distance and car engines revving down the street only a few blocks out, while to most people would have made them uneasy, made G feel a strange sense of relaxation, like he knew that this was just going to be any other walk home. After leaving the station and crossing over to the footpath along the poorly lit reserve, G tells me that he see... He sees what appears to be a very slow-moving man or woman, with their identity hidden by the darkness of the street, ducking in and out of the fence line, separating the short reserve from the houses that trailed down the rest of the street. It appeared to G that this figure would completely disappear into the darkness before reappearing into what little light existed. Noticeably freaked out, and having binge-watched way too many YouTube horror stories to know where this was about to go, G tells me that he nopes it across the other side of the street and continues to walk much quicker than before. But as he nears the fence line, a sound starts to resonate. What first sounds like a pretty strange bird becomes disturbingly distinct as G tells me he begins to hear a whimper. But slowly but surely, as he approaches the fence line, this whimper grows into an all-out cry. Fight or flight, right? But you never expect to freeze, G mutters under his breath as he tells me what happens next. As the sound of a cry fills his ears, he glances off to the fence line to see what looks like a 60-year-old man wearing nothing but tatters of clothes, kneeling on the reservoir's dirt, just staring at him and at this point scream crying, making dead eye contact with G. Crackheads, you might chuckle under your breath, but not if you were G. After standing in shock at the literally unbelievably disturbing sight, G hits the legs. With only a short walk from the station easily coverable in a five-minute run, The further G runs, the calmer he grows, with the still very audible screams of the disheveled man fading into the distance. This isn't where it's over for G, unfortunately. As he approaches this part of the story, the look of fear leaves his face, and anger replaces it. Approaching his street, he slows his run, so close to home that a sense of calm comes over him. A dodged bullet, you might think, but no. The roar of an engine hits up G's street, and a car suddenly pulls up on him. Knowing full well what's about to happen next, three blokes leap out of the car. Running futile as the already puffed smoker can't even muster up the breath to question his incoming fate. I don't ask G to get into this much, this part too much, but the next day I saw him he was looking rough. Two black eyes and no phone or wallet. He tells me that the event, two events are connected. The old man bait to send him into a sprint only to be jumped moments later. True or not, I don't know. But... I don't know how else to make sense of such strange events following by hell, one hell of a jumping. One thing I do know is to be careful out there at night. Living in Melbourne, I wasn't too affected by the 2020 bushfires. However, around that time, many of you might remember the thick layer of smog that covered the city. Fog on steroids and the perfect setting for what was about to take place, what used to be a nice and a relaxing trip up to my mate's F house in Coburg became as eerie as anything. It's the once nice view out of the train window was replaced with nothing but a grey film that stopped me from seeing anything more than a few metres out in front of me. I wasn't the smartest bloke in 2020, and our only mixed spot, right where I was heading, was located on a park bordering the edge of the Coburg Industrial District. With this being midsummer and near Christmas, the factories and shops which would usually be bustling with tradies was replaced with stark emptiness and smoke. Setting up where we usually do, we're standing around and then we notice on the oval, two dogs just running around, nothing out of the ordinary. So we kept minding our own business. And then we notice a bloke slowly appearing out of the smoke, yelling. So we assume, you know, he's just yelling at his dogs to come back because they were running around. But, you know, the longer we sit there, he, we realize like he wasn't really yelling commands at his dog. He was more just like shouting out sounds and stuff. Like, oh, that's a bit strange. But we just assumed... He's minding his own business, probably something to do with his dogs. So you keep chilling there. And then we notice this guy, he's not even looking at his dogs. He's just walking towards us, just yelling. So a bit weird. I'll get a photo up. We move down to this playground out of view, thinking that, you know, leave us alone. We're sitting there for maybe not even five minutes. When we look up, 
at the top of the playground, and this bloke, no longer yelling, was just standing there at the top of the playground, looking down at us. We hadn't even noticed him. Like, nah, no chance. So we, we run up. I'll get another photo behind this factory. And we're walking down the street, and adjacent to us, as you can see in the photo where that X is, this guy was just doing the same thing. Like, he had just walked, and he was walking down that street, no eye contact or anything, just yelling at us. So, pretty strange. We fully start running, and we make it to a park pretty far off, and we figured, ah, it's pretty long way away, probably gotten away. There's no way he'd follow us. Like, he couldn't have seen where we went. So, you know, we're sitting there, two hours passes, just having a good time, and we decide, all right, let's head back. So, on our way back, we cut through this place called uh, Hand Park, which gets its name because a few years back, they found seven hands in this park in a bag, and we're walking up this path, and at the end of this, at the end, we see the same bloke just standing there, pretty, pretty terrified. My mate T, who we were also with, just kind of yells out, go away, mate. Nothing. This bloke just standing there, no dogs now, at the end of this. So, you know, at that point, not joking around anymore, we just run off, and that was the end of that. But it's a pretty scary experience. You know, I wonder what this guy was doing. We were there for a good two hours, just away from him, and he really, he was right next to where we pretty much started this whole story. So, a bit strange, but luckily got away. So, you know, 